Hey y'all, this is Tasha, and today I'm here to do my October mid-month wrap-up. Hey y'all, so the first for the first part of October, I was able to complete 18 books, or 18 things, really. Um, a mix of novels, graphic novels, and novellas. Um, so let me go ahead and go through those as quickly as I can. Um, the first thing that I was able to finish was Hashtag Catfish by Ashley Nicole. Um, this is a story about a girl who has been in a relationship over the phone for about a couple of years, I think. And she sees the guy who she thought she was talking to. Um, she sees him at a cafe in person. He's like, I don't know you. And then her and this guy, her name is Kadera, and the guy's name is Emil. Her and Emil are trying to figure out who it is that has been catfishing her for all these years. Um, it was a short novella, probably about a hundred pages. Um, I really enjoyed it overall. I really like this author's writing. I have read another one of her short novellas and really enjoyed it. I like the way that she does characters and also the plot. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. She has just enough information for the novella that I feel like I know what's going on and where it's going. And although it's predictable, of course they fall in love, I did like the twists that were in there. Um, so I ended up giving this one four stars. First weekend of the month, I believe it was, me and my friend Star from At Home with a Book, I'll link her Instagram down below. Um, we decided that we were going to read graphic novels for that whole weekend. That weekend where we read graphic novels, I was able to get through six graphic novels. Um, and so those were Saga Book One, which I gave a four star, Mooncakes, which I gave a four star, Ghost, which I gave a five star, Roller Girl, Ghost, which I gave a five star, Roller Girl, which I gave a four star. Long Way Down the Graphic Novel, I gave a four star. And Fence Volume One, I gave a three star. Um, I think my favorite out of all of those was Mooncakes. Mooncakes is a story of a girl and her friend who fall in love, and her friend comes back to town. The girl is a witch, her friend, is a, a wolf changer um so nova's the witch tam is transgender and she's a werewolf and so it just follows their love story and then there's like a secret happening in the town and a couple of other things happen it's super duper cute the art style is cute the grandmothers are cute i really did enjoy that graphic novel and i definitely would recommend it um, and then the long way down the graphic novel, I had an advanced reader copy for this one and I really did enjoy this one overall. Um, while I believe that the actual book is more impactful, I'm glad that it was adapted to a graphic novel for people who are hesitant to read novels in verse or who are just hesitant to read novels in general, at least they have this graphic novel, a graphic depiction of what's going on that might get them interested in the story that this is telling. It's a very, very important story about cyclical violence and how your loyalty to your community, uh, it, it can put you in a cycle of violence that you can't get out of. So I really did enjoy that also. Um, and I will have a blog post linked down below when it's live of my full reviews for all those graphic novels. The next book that I finished was um, Finished Off in Fondant. And this is a cozy mystery that follows a lady who has a cooking show. Um, and she is the host of a like British Bake Off type show. And there is a murder on the set and they have to figure out who done it um as cozy mysteries go this one was pretty standard however um i felt like it took too long for us to see what the mystery was going to be and in addition to that i um the red herrings were just they were so apparent like they were so obvious that i didn't for one second think that 
that person was guilty. Um, so I gave this one a two star, unfortunately, but I do thank the publisher, NetGalley, for giving me an arc of this book, but it just wasn't my favorite cozy mystery that I've read. The next, set, the next book that I finished, I finished on audio. I listened to it with one of my friends from work. And that book is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. This is my first Butler. It definitely will not be my last. This is a story of Dana, who's a modern black woman. The modern timeline for this book is the 1970s, um, late to mid 1970s. Um, and this follows Dana, who her and her husband moved to this new house and all of a sudden she has this dizzy spell and then she wakes up and she's back in slave times and there's a little boy drowning and she has to save him and then their saga continues and you figure out her connection to this little boy and everything about why she's the one that's being called so um i really enjoyed this i enjoyed the writing i enjoyed that Butler didn't feel the need to explain every little thing that was in here. She did leave it up to the reader to figure some things out and I really liked that. Uh, I will say initially when I first started the audiobook I didn't really know what was going on. But once things clicked and the story got moving I really did enjoy this. Um, I ended up giving this five stars. The audiobook was not my absolute favorite. If I was judging the audiobook I'd probably give it like a three and a half four star. But the story itself and the discussions that it brought up about race and history and who tells history and that kind of stuff, it was really, really interesting and I really did enjoy my time with this book and I can't wait to read my next Butler, which will probably be Parable of the Sower, but don't hold me to it. The next book that I finished, I read this, it took me a long time, but it's just because I just wasn't reading in September. But I finished The Obelisk Cake by N.K. Jemison. This is the second book in the Broken Earth Trilogy. The Broken Earth Trilogy is a story about um, a lady who we're following where there's a season that's happened where it's basically like the end of the world and the world kind of resets. Um, and a bunch of stuff happens in the first book. And this is a continuation of that story. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with this book. Uh, Jemison, I mean, once you get acclimated to her writing, it's so much easier to fall into the story. I like the people that we followed in this story. I liked how the world continued to grow. This didn't feel like just a middle book that was just filler book. It's its own self-contained thing and story. And while you do need to read the first book to know what's going on, I don't feel like it left on like a, a huge, huge cliffhanger where you're like, all that build up for that. I feel like we got some resolution in this book, but I'm very excited to finish out this trilogy before the end of the year because I just, I need to know how all of this is going to end. So this is the Obelisk Gate and I gave this, of course, five stars. For me and my friend Star again, we decided to read middle grade books. So we just had a whole weekend where we read middle grade books. And the first book that I was able to finish for that is The Last Last Day of Summer by Lamar Giles. This is a story about Otto and Sheed who are who live in Logan County in a town called Fry. There's a bunch of very strange things that happen. So these two um, go off and they uh, solve mysteries and adventures and take care of all the weird creatures and things that come come through. This was such a great read and I don't know why more people who are looking for middle grade adventure stories featuring black characters not centered on grief aren't picking this up. This is a story of just two black boys adventuring and solving mysteries like you would read with any white character. However, they do still face the same issues that black boys face but it's filled with so much black boy joy and I just... I'm just gushing about it. I just love it. I have an arc of the new book that just came out um, on the 20th, I want to say. Um, but I can't wait to get my hands on the physical copy of it because this is a middle grade series that I definitely will be recommending and a de middle grade series that I definitely will be trying to get into the hands of as many children as I can because it's so great to see a black story that's not just centered on grief, that it's just two black boys 
enjoying their summer. Um, I didn't talk about the plot. So the plot is basically that they are on their last day before summer ends to go back to school. And all of a sudden, everything in the town stops and everybody's frozen where they are. They don't know exactly what happened, but they were at a place where they ran into the superhero guy and then this other guy in the top hat. And it deals with time and stopping time and all that missed opportunities. There's a whole lot in here that it deals with in a very middle grade appropriate way without dumbing it down. I just thor thoroughly enjoyed this story so much and I cannot wait to read the next one and I cannot wait for all the possibilities that this series could have. So the last I said summer, I of course gave this five stars. Y'all know I love a good middle grade and this totally hit the spot. The next middle grade that I picked up that weekend was Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. This was a book that, like it was creepy. Like I, it wasn't too scary for me, but it was extra creepy. Um, this follows a little girl named Ollie who's recently lost her mother. And so she just kind of lost all her joy in the things that she likes to do. So they're trying to get her back. She's in the sixth grade. Um, they're trying to get her back to her old self where she's making friends. She's just kind of completely withdrawn. So their school goes on this field trip to this farm and then the bus breaks down and they're stuck on this farm and they're scarecrows. This is so creepy. Um, there are a few jump scares in here, kind of. Um, if I was a if I was a the intended audience, I think this book really would creep me out and I wouldn't be able to look at scarecrows the same. But um, it wasn't too scary to the point where I think it's nightmare inducing, if that makes sense. Um, I do love Catherine Arden's writing. I have read the first two books in the Baron Nightingale series. So I knew that I was going to like the writing. And I mean, she just has a touch for middle grade writing. It was so good in this shoe. Absolute favorite. It was a very fun and quick read. And I do want to read the next one that she wrote. But this is a middle grade horror and I gave it four stars. The second book that I started but didn't finish for our middle grade weekend was the first Goosebumps book, Welcome to Dead House um, by Earl Stein. Um, this is for me in Star's project of uh, revisiting childhood favorites. This is her pick for the month. Um, this follows Josh and Amanda who moved to this creepy house with their parents that their dad um, inherited. And... Um, they think they're seeing stuff ghosts they make new friends in town but there's still something off about all these friends um and then they find out something it has the creep factor this is one of the scarier goosebumps books it doesn't have as much of the humor that his later books have but i really did enjoy the story and i thought it was fun and there were a few funny parts a few jump scares we all know what to expect with the goosebumps but this one was really good and i gave this one a four star the next book that I've read was uh, Golden Fury by Samantha Co. I'll leave my blog my blog tour post down below um, in, in the description box. Um, I received this free from St. Martin, so thank you for a copy of this book. This is a book about a girl named Thea who is the assistant to her mother who's an alchemist. Her mother is trying to make the Philosopher's Stone. It causes her to go mad. She tries to kill Thea. Thea is sent away to her dad in Oxford, who she doesn't really know at all. And he's an alchemist also. And then they have, and then stuff happens and she tries to get away and trying to figure out her place in the world and how to create the Philosopher's Stone for eternal life. This was fun. I do like alchemy. In fantasy stories, I don't read enough of them because I do enjoy it. This had a good balance of explaining the alchemy in addition to um, not over explaining it where it got boring. The plot moved at a steady clip. I thought that Thea's character was okay. She did behave like a naive 16 year old girl who had been sheltered. But like there was a point where I was like, you've had enough worldly experiences that you need to snap out of it and just get it together. Um, so that kind of annoyed me just a bit. But overall, the writing was good. The writing did not 
it felt like it was intended for an older audience so this is definitely older YA. I would say that it's a why because of the way that the romance and stuff is done. I thought it was done really well in here. And so um, I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. The next book that I listened to was Girl Serpent Thorn by Militia Barshadus. I read her first book, Girls Made of Snow and Glass, I think. And I didn't love it. Um, but I did, I enjoyed it overall. I like the fairy tale esque element of it. Anyway, we're talking about Girl Serpent Thorn. Um, I enjoyed this one immensely more. Um, I think I was more invested in the story. It's about a girl who is the sister of the um, Shaw, like the king of this village or whatever. Um, they hide her away because when she was born, she was cursed with the inability to touch anyone. If she touches anyone, they die immediately because um, she has poison running through her veins. I like the way that, well, let's start with the audiobook narration. The narration was good. It was, I really enjoyed it. I like the voices that she did. I can't remember if I heard this narrator bef before, but I feel like I have. Um, so I really did enjoy that, that aspect of it. Um, as far as the story goes, I thought that the story moved at a steady clip, so I was not bored. I didn't, the world was built very clearly to the point where I could see the flowers and smell the flowers. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed how romance was handled in this also. And, um, there is a sapphic relationship in here that I didn't expect, but totally made sense. Um, I enjoyed learning about the different creatures in here. Overall, overall, this is a pretty good fantasy, a very good YA fantasy. I will continue to read from this author, and I ended up giving this one a three and a half stars. The next book that I read is the first in the Night Hunter series, and that's Halfway to the Grave by Janine Frost. Um, this follows Cat and Bones. Um, Cat is half vampire. She goes out and she hunts vam she hunts vampires in the evenings after she finishes her college courses and she runs into bones one night and she tries to kill him but he captures her and then they start off on their adventure bones hires cat to uh, work with him and use her as bait to try to take down these evil vampires um i wanted a paranormal romance i wanted some vampires in my life this absolutely delivered it i love cat and bones i think that their relationship is stunning and i love it and how it's progressing the way that this one ended i already have the second book on audio ready to go because i need to know how they get back together because i know they're gonna get back together and i need to know these things so i ended up giving halfway to the grave four stars a very very strong four stars i do intend to read the novella that comes after this and then go right into book two here pretty soon you'll probably hear about it at the end of the month wrap up because i have been going through books clearly so um halfway to the grave four stars then i read a couple of palette cleansers because i just wanted something short and smutty and romancy so that's what i picked up the first one that i picked up was wicked brat by Aria Cole and Mila Crawford. Um, this is a story about, this is an age gap romance um, with a daddy kink. Um, it was fine. It was about 120 pages. The relationship moved really fast. It was really smutty. Um, daddy kink isn't my absolute favorite um, of like erotica to read. So I, you know, it kind of turned me off a little bit. <laughs> It kind of put me off a little bit because um, it's not my favorite. But as far as like a fun Halloweeny read, it's fine. Basically, what happens is this girl um, falls for her, her step uncle. Well, like her mom's, yeah, her mom's husband's brother. So they're not related or anything. Um, there's a huge age gap. She's like 21, and he's like late 40s um it was fine I, I would recommend it it's just a fun quick read that you could read in an hour or so I really did it, it got the job done and then next I read my my first Ruby Dixon which I've heard so much about her 
from Mara from Books Like Whoa. And I read Beauty and Autumn. <clears throat> this is a Beauty and Beast retelling, if you couldn't tell. And basically, they pick a girl who they send into the woods at the village festival and the beast takes her. And the only way to break the curse is that you can't look at the beast. This girl's been having dreams about the beast, like muddy dreams about him. And so she's the one that's gonna actually break the, break the curse. So she wears a blindfold and she goes, the beast gets her and she's keep the blindfold on for three days. Um, and then at the end of the three days, the curse will be broken and she gets to be with the beast. This is, again, fine. It was very dirty. Um, and the blindfold, pretty standard Beauty and the Beast stuff. The guy's like, why are you doing this? They bang. Stuff happens. It's just, it's, uh, I, see why, I see why people like Ruby Dixon because it's short and it's to the point and it doesn't take itself too seriously. And so that's what I really enjoyed about this, that it didn't take, take itself super seriously. It just was like, this is campy. This is ridiculous. Here it is. And I really did enjoy that. And I will be reading more from Ruby Dixon. So that is the 18 books that I read for the first half of October. Um, since the 15th of October, I have finished two more books that I will talk about in my end of the month wrap up. I'm just really so glad that I got my reading mojo back. So I can't wait to talk about those books. I'm currently participating in the Black SS sff a -thon. I didn't do a TBR because I am going TBR list, so I'm just kind of picking up stuff that I think might fit something on the bingo board and um, wedging it in how I can. So I um, expect to finish something today. Um, I'm currently reading Mama Day by Gloria Naylor, which is like a black speculative fiction story. Um, and... So I plan on having quite a few books, probably not another 18 books because, you know, like I have stuff to do, but it'll probably be a significant amount again for the end of the month. So um, that's everything that I have for this video. Um, please like, comment, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye y'all.